Hey guys, what's up? Today we'll be talking about some new updates that Figma has introduced just recently. I think just yesterday. I got these updates, some of them at the very least, just yesterday. Uh, and I was attending their con uh, their conference, their live conference about it. So I thought I might share some of the top things that I found really interesting. So obviously there is, these are some new and improved ways of collaboration. Um, so the first thing that I wanna point out is and which is something that I don't really like, is the idea that you can use music in your um, fig jam files if you want to do that. So again, I don't really support music. I, <laughs> I'm not really a fan of it. So let's just go to that new feature. So the new feature that I want to talk about is really interesting and that's like voting. So as you can see, you can actually assign someone certain votes. You can also see the results and you can just go ahead and do something like that. So imagine we're talking about likes. So I'm going to say I like cats. I'm going to say uh, dogs or whatever, uh, pizza, uh, chicken, uh, and stuff along those lines. Figma. Obviously I like Figma. And you can have like, what do you like? You can start a vote and any people in this file can actually just start voting. So I'm gonna do start. And as you can see, this is gonna start the voting. It's automatically gonna pick a, um, a stamp for me. I can change the stamp as well, but it doesn't really matter. I can go ahead and I can say, I really like cats. And maybe I just like Figma or whatever. So again, we can end it for everyone. And it's gonna again ask us if you wanna end the vote for everyone. And I'm gonna say end it. Now, as you can see, it actually just shows an aggregation of the votes. So imagine if there were 10 people actually here voting on a bunch of different things. Now you don't have to count those votes yourself. It's gonna recognize the, uh, the total votes on those particular things. And let's say if I was actually scrolled up or something, I can just click on a particular item or zoomed in or whatever to actually go and see the votes of the, of the individuals. Um, and the total number of votes, obviously, as well. As you can see, there's also a badge here identifying which one was successful. So again, that's great. I can obviously delete the results as well, and I can uh, do the voting again. So again, that's I feel like that's gonna really be interesting. That's gonna save a lot of time because previously in our team, we used to do voting quite a lot, but we used to aggregate these results by ourselves, which is something I don't really like. One other thing which they previously had as well, I'm not sure why they're introducing or marketing it, are templates. So they already previously had templates. Like for example, you have a bunch of templates here. Maybe they introduced some uh, new templates. So again, obviously templates are very interesting. Uh, they're very powerful and I would definitely recommend you using them in FigJam. One other great thing about these templates is that once you're actually done with, let's say, your work, you can just copy this and you can just paste that directly in your FigJam file, or oh, sorry, Figma file. So again, as you can see, obviously the words wouldn't be copied, but again, these are editable items. You can actually go ahead and edit them uh, afterwards as well. You can just reorganize them, do whatever, uh, just in case if you wanna have that information available to you in Figma. So that's that. Apart from that, some other features that I'd just like to talk about are um, the, calendar integration feature. So if you actually have um, certain extensions for Microsoft Teams or the Figma Chrome extension, if you're actually booking a call, let me open the Google Chrome tab. Just give me a second. So if I go here, as you can see, this was the event that I was attending. If I just go ahead and actually tap on it, as you can see, we have these buttons because of the uh, integration the Figma Chrome integration, you can actually add a Fig Jam board directly and add a Figma file directly to your calendar, which I think is can be pretty useful, even though I'm not super excited about it. But one thing I am super excited about are sections, finally. Uh, for those who are aware, we previously had sections within Figma. And again, it was really powerful. You can group things together, you can move these things around. You don't, you didn't have to add, let's say, separate headings for different things. But now you can do the same in Figma as well. You can just press Shift S, or you can directly go here into the frame tool and select the section, and you can draw a section. And no matter how many frames you had, if I actually had, let's say, a bunch of frames, and one other thing that they've introduced, or a few other things is they've introduced new uh, default frames for iPhone 14 and stuff along those lines, so that's pretty interesting as well. But imagine if I had certain flows like this, like imagine like, I don't know, 10 different screens like this, I can just group them automatically in a section like this. And again, it's really easy to move around. You don't have to again grab them again or do something and do all of that funky stuff. So you can just grab them. Again, these are section. I'm gonna say this is section one. 
Uh, and let's just go ahead and actually increase the font size to something large. Maybe that's a bit too large. So again, section one. And then let's just go ahead and do the same for here, section two. Now, one thing that's really interesting about it is obviously these sections would behave very normally. Uh, you can copy the link to each individual section and you can just share it with people, so on and so forth. I actually have an application like this, uh, like a concept application, which I'm gonna share uh, to show you what state management means mm -hmm. using sections. So imagine I have this, I have this prototype, obviously, as you can see, the, this is the starting uh, position of the prototype. You click on get started, you're gonna go onto this next screen. Um, if you click on the cards icon, you're gonna go onto this cards, and let me just again, move the breakdown at the bottom and actually cards at the top so something like this if you click on cards here you're going to go you're going to go to cards if you click on one card it's going to go to the card details and then if you click on this receipts icon you're going to go to the expense breakdown so what's really interesting here is imagine this is the home screen right i'm going to press get started right if i press get started um and i press let's say cards it's gonna to go to cards obviously and I can actually go to have one individual card. But what happens if I click on home again? Now usually what we used to do with previous prototypes is we would link one screen or the main screen or the starting screen when a person clicks on home. Similarly, if I let's say press R, it's gonna take me to the home uh, prototype screen. But now I'm just gonna share that in front of you. If I link this home to the section itself, not to one screen, to the section, what happens? I click on get started, I click on a card, I go inside a particular card, and then I click on home. So, sorry, I, I don't have that linked. I click on home in general from this screen. I click on home and as you can see, the amazing thing happens, it takes me to the last state in this particular section. Similarly, now if I click on cards, it's gonna take me to the last preserved state, which was this one. This was the last screen that I, or last frame that I was in. It's gonna take me to that. Similarly, if I go to receipts now, and I can go back to home, it's gonna take me to that screen. I can go back to receipts again, and I can go back to cards. It's gonna take me to the last preserved state that I had in those sections. And if I go to receipts, I scroll down and as you can see, I'm just seeing the receipts. I go back to cards and then I come back to receipts. Even the scroll position is maintained. I mean, how amazing, amazing is that? So again, a lot of powerful stuff is gonna come out of the state management system. Not only obviously you can organize things in sections like these, which is gonna make things easier, but on a prototyping level, it's gonna make the journey so much smoother. So yeah, I mean, this is just a an amazing superpower that they've announced and I'm extremely excited about it. One other thing that obviously has been introduced as well recently, uh, even though I think like that was actually introduced a while back, is you have certain formatting options in FigJam. So now you can have, you previously had bullet points as well, obviously, but now you have, you can obviously bold it, you can italic it, and you can obviously have quotes as well. So again, the quote thing I think looks really nice. And then you obviously have uh, multi-line codes as well. So again, some minor things that probably hopefully you can start using, but the most interesting thing here, especially when it comes to FigJam, is the voting. And in Figma, it is the Figma, or oh, sorry, the Figma sections. So that's pretty much it. I'll also be doing a detailed video about videos in Figma, but I just wanted to mention that Figma already introduces a lot of awesome stuff um, when they're actually introducing a new feature. So if you actually wanna play around with videos and prototypes or videos in Figma in general, you can just download this file, videos and prototypes uh, playground, and you can mess around with it. They actually have certain components established as well, where you can see how those interactions are working. For example, how do you actually attach a video in a landing page or in a product gallery, for example, something like this, or the social media interaction, which you usually see in TikTok, Instagram, so on and so forth. If you wanna actually achieve something similar to that, how do you do that? Well, they don't necessarily teach you how do you do that, but they have these components built in. So if you wanna use them, and if you just wanna change the images or videos to whatever you want, then you can do that. But I am gonna go into a detailed video about creating this particular interaction and um, another interaction, maybe the product gallery interaction. So you can know how to actually do that on your own if you wanted to. So again, that's pretty much it. You can also see how to use audio files directly within Figma and we may actually explore that or probably not. So 
but yeah we're gonna know when that time comes so that's pretty much it do subscribe to hit the bell icon let me know which feature you're extremely excited about and we can talk more about that in the comments